So I'm going to talk a lot about these three things during these videos. Um, the greatest common factor, divots of squares, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later. We want to factor polynomials of this form, x squared plus bx plus c, for example, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay? These are the three things we're always going to be looking for in every one of these problems. All right? So we're going to start with a discussion on the greatest common factor, okay, or GCF for short. Uh, but remember, um, factoring, what factoring is, is really the opposite of multiplying. Let me try and explain that a little bit better. I'll say recall the following. Um, if I asked you the last chapter we did this, and the directions were to multiply, right? So from last chapter I say multiply. We multiply that, you distribute the 2, right? 2 times x is 2x, and then distribute the 2 to the 4, 2 times 4 is 8, and then we'd be done. Okay, so if I go this direction, that's called multiplication, right? So what we're going to be doing is going backwards. We're going to, here's the problem, it's going to say, say 2x plus 8, and I'm going to ask you to factor it. What you have to be able to do is write that, okay? That's called factoring. Okay. So think about how you do this. So say you're given this problem, I ask you to factor it. What you want to do, the first thing you always want to do is find the greatest common factor. So look at 2x plus 8, I want to find the biggest number that divides evenly into 2x and 8. That's the greatest common factor. Okay, the biggest factor of those two numbers. And that's 2, right? 2 goes into 2x, 2 goes into 8, nothing bigger than that. Okay, so I factor out the 2, so I write it outside the parentheses and then decide with what I'm left with. Okay? So let's try one. Example 1. 3x minus 99. And the directions for all these are to factor. That's it, just factor. Okay, so I look at that, and the first thing I always do with every one of these problems, no matter which one it is, is look for the greatest common factor. Sometimes there will be one, sometimes there won't. In this example, there is. Right? The greatest common factor of 3x in 99 is 3, because 3 will divide into that term and that term. Okay? So when I recognize the common factor, I write 3, and then I put it on the outside of the parentheses. It's the opposite of that distributive property. So I know my final answer should look like this. A 3 sitting on the outside, and then i got to figure out what goes in. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, what I'd like to try to explain is I just ask myself 3, since it's the opposite of multiplying, 3 times what gives you 3x? The answer is x. Okay. 3 times what gives you 99? The answer is 33. I say factoring is the opposite of multiplication. You could also say that about division, right? What I really did was divided both of these guys by 3 to get my result on the inside, okay? And then I'm done factoring. You can always check by multiplying. This is my final answer right here. But I can always do the check by multiplying what I get like we used to do, and I should get the, the original problem. That is, if I distribute the 3, 3 times x is 3x, 3 to the 33, 3 times 33 is 99. I can check all these answers pretty easily, okay? All right. Um, number two. Something similar, 16x minus 48. Okay, so you got to be careful with these sometimes because these two terms, 16x and 48, have a couple common factors. I can take 2 into both of those. I can take 8 into both of those. I can take 4 into both of those. But what we want is the greatest common factor, that is the G in the GCF. And the greatest common factor between these two would be 16. Okay? I can take 16 into both of these. I've got to recognize the largest number that goes into both of these, 16. Okay? And once I figure out it's 16, I say 16 times what is 16x? It has to be x by itself. 16 times what gives me 48? It has to be 3. Okay? More examples. Number three, um, let's do negative 4x minus 4. 
Okay, so in this case, I have a couple choices. I can factor out a neg. We see that four goes into both of these, right? So I can factor out a four. So let's do that. Four times what is negative four x? It has to be negative x. Four times what gives me negative four? It has to be negative one. That is correct answer. Check. Okay, I can multiply through to see that that's right. Another option would be to factor out the negative 4, and a little bit later we might want to do this. Uh, this might be helpful for us. Because if I factor out a negative 4, that's a little more simplified what's on the inside. So think about it. Negative 4 times what gives you negative 4x? Well, that has to be positive x, right? And negative 4 times what gives me negative 4? That has to be positive 1. Okay, check. Notice they're the same thing. They don't look the same, but they're the same thing. Um, I like this answer a little bit better because I can just factor out that negative sign with the 4 and I get positives on the inside. Okay, so just look, look for that. You'll see a couple of those in the textbook where you see two different answers. Either one's acceptable. Either one's okay. Um, moving on. Number 4. X squared minus 8X. Directions are the same factor. Okay. So if I look at this one, the factor, there's no number, right? If you want, you can you can put a 1 in front of this x squared, if it helps. And the greatest common factor between 1 and 8 is 1, which isn't really going to get us anywhere. Okay. But now we have to start considering these x terms as well. This is the first example where both terms has an x term. Both terms have an x term, right? x and x. Um, so I recognize I can factor that out. That's part of the common factor. In this case, that is the common factor, x. x goes into both of those. x goes into x squared, x goes into 8x. Okay? So I factor that out and I ask myself the same question. x times what gives me x squared? x times x. x times what gives me negative 8x? Negative 8. And I'm done. That's it. Again, check. Check your work. Do a quick check of this. Just multiply your answers. See so what you get. X times X, X squared. X times negative 8, negative X squared. Done. Okay. Real easy to check this. Number 5. 8X squared minus 64X. Okay. Greatest common factor. So now it's a little more. Then 8, I can see I get to factor out an 8 from 8 and 64, right? So I'm going to say that's going to be part of my greatest common factor. But then I also recognize they both have x's. So I can factor out at least an x. When we get into one that have higher powers, you can always factor out the variable with the lowest power. Okay, so we'll see an example like that. But in this case, the x to the first is the lowest power. So notice I can't factor out an x squared because x squared doesn't divide evenly into that. Okay, it has to be the lower power. All right. So that's my greatest common factor. That's a little different than previous problems. It has a number term and an x term, and that's my greatest common factor. Okay. So once I recognize I can factor 8x out, I ask myself the same question: 8x times what gives me 8x squared? X. 8x times what gives me 64x? Be careful with this one. It's just minus 8. Right. Not 8x is minus 8. 8x times negative 8, negative 64x. Okay? All right, moving on. I got a couple more examples for you. Um, we're still working on this greatest common factor. We're still working on part A. We're going to get to the other ones in a little bit. Okay? Um, so let's see. That was example 5. So we're on to example 6. Ten x to the third minus four x squared minus twelve x. Okay, very similar to the previous problem. Only now there's three terms. I have to consider all three. So look at the numbers: ten, four, and two. Common factor. Or I'm sorry, ten, four, and twelve. Common factor 2, x to the third, x to the second, x, common factor x. Okay, so 2x is my greatest common factor. 
That's the biggest term that will go evenly into all three of those. And then I ask myself, what's left? 2x times 5x squared. Right? If I multiply those two, I would get the 10x cubed. 2x times, neg 2x times negative 2x is 4x squared. Right? If I multiply this by this, I get 4x squared. And 2x times negative 12x, 2x times negative 6, sorry, gives you negative 12x. Okay. Again, the check, I'm not doing the check, I'm talking a lot about it. To do the check, what do you do? Just multiply. That times that, that times that, that times that. You should get your original problem. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's bring in some terms that have more than one variable and see if we can deal with those. 5x squared y minus 15 xy. Plus 25 xy squared. Okay, a little bit harder, but nothing we can't handle. Common factor. Okay, so just take it step by step. I see a 5, a 15, and a 25. I know I can factor out a 5 from all of those. And look at your x term. You got x squared, you got x and x, right? So the greatest common factor again is the x with the lowest power, which is just x. I cannot factor an x squared out of that. And then the same idea with the y, I got three y terms. The highest power is 2, the lowest power is 1, so I'm going to factor out the y to the first power, just y. Okay. So the question is, what am I left with after I factor that out? 5xy times what gives me the original term, the 5x squared y? Well, think about it. Just x, right? Does that make sense? 5xy times x is 5x squared y. You factored out the 5 and the y, you factored out one of the x's, so it leaves you with 1x. Okay? Minus. I know I need a 3, because 3 times 5 is 15. And the x, y are factored out, right? So it's just 3. 5x, y times 3 is 15 x, y. Okay, and then the last term. 5 times 5 gives you the 25. You factored out the x, and then there's one y here, so there should be one y left. That is y to the first power. Okay, that one looks a little funny, but we've done it correctly. Check your work. Multiply 5xy times those three. You'll end up with that. Okay? All right. So that concludes the first video, Grace Common Factor. In the next video, we will talk about this guy. Okay? So do some practice.